Hi everyone, my topic today is XML attacks and boring and the lost methods. So uh, in the most recent years, a lot of XML related problems came to the daylight. I think this is partly because uh, the most recent OWASP top 10 uh, contains XXE and a lot of applications are tested against uh, only this list, sadly. Uh, to include this vulnerability is uh, quite great, uh, but there is room uh, for improvement in the way we do it, I think. In the following few minutes, I try to share some information to achieve this goal, uh, I mean the improvement. Uh, the methods and techniques shared here are not the result of my greatness, uh, but uh, the forgotten or not well utilized uh, past discoveries. This is because as I started to dive deep in the topic a while ago, I realized that most of the areas I was facing were basically already documented. And uh, those were sadly rarely used, so I hope that this will uh, improve on that. Uh, we will see that uh, testing is way more interesting than just getting the slash etc slash passw file uh, in case of a successful attack. I hope that the majority of us uh, will implement some of these tips in the future. So uh, this could be utilized, for example, in a bug bounty program or something like that. As uh, some introduction is always mandatory, uh, I am Mark Modley and I love to teach and make systems better. Uh, but I do not really would like to waste time on myself. Uh, in case anyone is interested in having a chat with me, I'm happy to do so. Uh, but they should wait uh, for the end of the talk and my email address will be shared there if they are still not con convinced to avoid me. Uh, just a quick shout out uh, for the guys at a Hungarian podcast called Hekes Langos. As one of the main reasons I am sharing it, this is because they had a great episode uh, with uh, Attila Maroshi. Uh, I guess, uh, in which uh, they gave me the motivation to do this. Uh, but do not blame them uh, if my uh, performance is not top-notch or, or, or the uh, topic is evident for everyone. And by the way, at the end, I will reveal what the underlying reason is for Yoda's unusual uh, speech patterns. So I guess this was way more than I wanted to sh share or say about myself, so let's get to the content itself. Uh, history. I know that this isn't a favorite topic of anyone, but uh, as the somewhat online nature of the conference uh, prevents me from uh, getting some feedback on the age of the audience, I think it is better to mention some artifacts from the past that we still carry today. Uh, I was lucky or unlucky enough, uh, depends on the uh, aspect, uh, to see the Hungarian uh, internet and web grow and evolve into well, something, and slowly catching up uh, with the global leaders or standards of the uh, web, I hope. And uh, from that journey, there are some points uh, to take with us, I think. So let's talk uh, about the origins. Uh, in case uh, we have not heard about it, uh, SGML is a framework which uh, helps us describe markup languages like the hopefully well-known HTML and XML as well. Uh, in some cases, uh, we could still remember the not so good old days when the sites we were visiting were not able to be displayed as intended and there was kind of an anarchy how things were interpreted and implemented in many ways. And I think all of this was rooted 
uh, deeply in the markup language itself. I mean, HTML with the early versions before 4.0, uh, I think. Uh, but we are still using these uh, levels or, or versions of this uh, language. So we still carry on uh, with these legacies. Uh, not only the user experience was questionable, but uh, because of this nature of the HTML, uh, more mechanical and architectural and reliability problems arose uh, from this ambiguity. There was actually a case when a Hungarian web developer forum, uh, Weblabor, uh, yeah, that was way, way before uh, Stack Overflow, uh, had a post where the most accepted answer suggested to implement price management based on exchange rate scraped uh, from a big bank's website. Uh, the example provided was basically a regular expression. It was working uh, just because the HTML wasn't changed in a while. Uh, everyone seemed to be happy and things were all right, I guess, uh, until one day, <laughs> as all of the tale, uh, tales start. Uh, the bank redesigned uh, its web page. Uh, as you can imagine, all hell broke loose. So uh, some web shops were offering uh, items priced with a re really customer friendly uh, zero Hungarian foreign. Uh, the better implemented ones um, basically said that no item is purchasable at the moment. So uh, that was quite a mess. Uh, and the wholesome part of the story is that the bank held out uh, the developers, so uh, the bank put the HTML structure back for a while uh, in order uh, to give some time to the developers so they could adapt uh, to an officially supported interface as far as I remember. I hope that this little tale uh, highlights the necessity having uh, documents which are well formatted, uh, obsoleting regular expressions to get some information from sites. And of course, uh, the structure of the documents needs to be verified or validated against of uh, some kind of uh, description as well. So uh, those were the I guess the first drivers of uh, creating XML. Uh, I, I think uh, it is one of the modern days seven wonder. Uh, so XML was so well created or is so well created that in the past 25 years or something, there was no hard need to redesign it completely. I think uh, UTF-8 is the standard that could be comp uh, to, could be a competitor for it, at least. Uh, but character encodings and hacking regarding that is an all uh, another topic itself. So that would be a great uh, topic. Maybe I will present it later. Uh, but back to the topic. Uh, later, as the internet user base was growing and everyone wanted to uh, look and feel uh, the same in a each and every browser, uh, the World Wide Web Consortium came up uh, with a great idea. What should we do uh, and how to solve this problem? So they came up with, well, we kind of like XML, we kind of like HTML. So they came up with, came up with XHTML, uh, what nobody likes. Uh, basically, uh, I, I, I never understood why anyone would think that uh, developers will start to uh, write good markup uh, language based uh, documents and create well good uh, sites when they could continue uh, with the crappy solution of the past because of backwards compatibility. Uh, and that was another point where uh, XML, uh, XHTML failed miserably uh, because it provided zero backwards compatibility. 
uh, XHTML died, but uh, our beloved uh, XML prevailed. Uh, don't get me wrong, I, I really like to use XML itself, but I think we are re using it really wrong. So not the tool is bad, uh, we are just misusing it, I think. So uh, why is uh, XML so interesting in a hacker conference? As uh, one of the best, if not the best, uh, constructed markup language in history, uh, it is used in a lot, a lot of specification. And uh, as a standard, even uh, the handling is standardized. So uh, if we could exploit a behavior in one uh, site, basically we could exploit uh, regardless of what language it is implemented in. So. I do not need, I do not really want to bore anyone uh, with further more history, although I really like uh, how it turned out. Uh, but uh, I would like to uh, restrict myself from now on uh, to technical details and solutions. So uh, let's jump to the most uh, known, I guess, XML attack. Uh, the XML external entity attack. Well, uh, previously I mentioned that uh, there was a need uh, or, or there was something, uh, a drive or force that we wanted to validate or documents, meaning that uh, we want to ensure that the structure is, is a predefined one, for example. And this is done mostly in two ways, one being the doctide definition, aka DTD, and the other one is being uh, the XML schema definition. Although both could be abused, this talk's focus will be the uh, DTD part of it. So uh, what is the most and well-known uh, attack of uh, XML. So uh, I'd really love to see how many of us is comfortable with DTD uh, by a raise of hand, but I assume a quick summary is not against anyone's will. Uh, of course, the online nature prevents me to do so, so I need to get through this part as well. Uh, so in the XML document, we could create a section uh, or reference a document as well, uh, which is used to validate the structure of the markup. Uh, data types, uh, the structure of the tags uh, related to itself, uh, and so on. Uh, for the document, it is also a requirement uh, to be uh, well formatted, so the DTD check could be uh, done after uh, the document is uh, checked for uh, being well formatted. So um, we are able to do here a lot of things in here. And uh, besides the document uh, model, basically we could create also entities. And those could be simple text ones and there could be a little extra, which is uh, most of the other vectors are relaying on. Uh, so behold the external entity. Uh, for, for a long time I had no idea why anyone uh, mindful would design something like that, but as I was researching this I came across some applications that used uh, disk technology to uh, store environment specific variables, so I think it could be okay but only as an additional feature. Um, yeah, so I mentioned the hackish language guys. Uh, they were one reason why I give this talk. Uh, and the second reason I really wanted to give this talk is that I really like to play CTF. And by that I do not exclusively refer to the Unreal Tournament game mode, but also the IT security competitions as well. And sadly, 
I do not have a lot of time to do so. So I'm always a bit disappointed when an XML ex uh, challenge uh, is marked hard and the solution is basically uh, the same as uh, this little example on the screen. Uh, of course, uh, it is dressed in in different shapes or, or, or addresses every time, but it is still kind of a, a, a letdown for me when when the changes or, or the challenge itself is five lines and that's all. And I wanted to make another shout out uh, to the Hungarian partic participants. Uh, please play CTF games. Join ctftime.org and play CTF games. Uh, I am the only semi-active member of the hardcore IT team which has not participated in a uh, challenge in like three months or something uh, this year. So there was like two active months where we played and we are still placed in uh, fifth, uh, I think, uh, in the Hungarian uh, country. So shame on us, uh, join to play and let's do some uh, CTF plays. Okay, so onto the second most known XML based attacks, I think, yeah, and it is denial of service. Uh, I am sure that most of us heard about uh, one really famous, uh, but, let's ex but let's explore uh, a little more on this particular topic. topic. So, uh, in a denial of service example, or a denial of service uh, attack, we could basically aim for three different things. Uh, these are the most valuable uh, resources in a computer, and that is memory, CPU, and network. Uh, sadly, most bug bounty programs forbid uh, those attacks, but I have seen some progress in the most recent months. So I, I hope that in the future, uh, we will be able to utilize uh, some real but forgotten techniques regarding to those. So when I said that uh, there is a well-known XML DOS attack, probably most of the audience uh, thought uh, about uh, some reason uh, or memory uh, overloading or overbooking, uh, which is not else than uh, the billion laugh attack. Uh, the only requirement for this attack is that uh, the internal entity uh, option for the DTD must be enabled. It is really uh, one of the cheapest solution to uh, DOS a given service as it requires basically uh, only a few lines of input and its effects are quite remarkable. Uh, one of the given example uh, which we could see, uh, it consumes like three gigabytes of memory and this could be scaled up by either by changing the uh, contents of the low entity and uh, the depths as well. So uh, it is quite an interesting one. It is It uses the quadratic blow up. Uh, it consumes a lot of memory uh, which could be necessary for the application and reserves a huge amount of processing power uh, in order to do so. And uh, it is called the billion laugh uh, because uh, this little lol or laugh uh, out loud uh, part is repeated, uh, I think 10 to the power of nine I, I do not want to confuse, yes, 10 to the power of 9, as I do not want to confuse uh, with the uh, long scale billion, which is 10 to the power of uh, 12, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, the billion laugh attack. But let's, let's just not hate uh, XML. If someone is happy that they are using uh, YAML, 
uh, for configuration uh, files. I have some bad news for them as well. So uh, the attack is possible uh, in some scenarios here as well. But sorry uh, for the uh, off tracking. Uh, get back to uh, the memory based uh, attacks. Uh, what if uh, we do not have the luxury that the DTD is enabled in a document? Basically, uh, we've got some tricks uh, in our pocket uh, to get through this uh, situation as well and cause some trouble. Uh, but those could be way more painful for the attacker uh, to employ. So uh, basically, uh, we need to have more resources dedicated for that attack. A lesser known one uh, is, for example, the mega tags. Uh, here, the adversary creates a really, really large uh, opening and closing tag, something in order in the order of uh, megabytes magnitude, uh, and sends it as an input. Uh, this could cause quite some surprising failures in a target system, ranging from buffer overflow, overflows and, and simple uh, memory allocation. Uh, yeah, so that's quite an interesting topic. Uh, we specially use the tags, not uh, the small data or the data part, uh, of the uh, message, as for the data, in most of the parsers, there are hard limits. So basically, there shouldn't be X amount of characters there, and basically, they are limiting it this way. But uh, in, in the parsers are not so mindful handling uh, the uh, tags, and thus we could uh, take a look around there and cause some trouble as well. Uh, another uh, good uh, candidate for, for an attack like that is um, to aim for the object limit of the parser and stop other necessary objects uh, to be created. For example, some GVM, Java Virtual Machines, have got a smaller hard limit on how many objects could be create, created or allocated at once uh, by a process. And this way, uh, as these objects are live, they could not be removed by the garbage collector and uh, the GVM crashes or could crash. I highly recommend uh, to try these tricks uh, for the next penetration tests and, and tests in our environment. Uh, as I, I must admit, uh, it is a joy to see the surprise on the local security folks face uh, when you are able to stop a service uh, with a, a single XML file, even when the DTD is completely disabled. Uh, we need to really talk about uh, the CPU uh, targeted exploits or CPU targeted problems. A really good uh, candidate for a surprise finding is a deeply nested eczema, which could cause excessive CPU uh, cycle usage. A couple of thousand nested uh, object or nested uh, tag could lead to severe consequences as it is not easy to utilize uh, parallelism on it. Uh, even when a parser is using uh, recursion, uh, we could as well create some memory error as the stack trace uh, could eat, uh, eat up quite a bit of memory as well. The next CPU attack is kind of an unusual one. Uh, I really like, uh, it, like it when we can utilize other sites and services in order to achieve something big. Uh, if a service is running in a pooled manner uh, with exclusive locks, uh, we could starve the other threads. Starting with remote long distance addresses, we are uh, 
able uh, to slow down the parser and wait uh, for a long time. Uh, so uh, we could ensure that it will uh, be quite a long time to parse the XML itself. If we would like to push it even fur further, uh, we could use our own slow responder servers. Uh, basically, if anyone heard about the slow loris attack, uh, we could utilize something like that, but not uh, with the Apache uh, browser, but uh, the uh, XML processing part of an application. Uh, and yeah, this could exhaust the server's connection pool limit uh, as well as the thread limit. So yeah, uh, we could utilize it uh, with the slow, slow loris uh, attack-like uh, behavior. Okay, uh, we really need to speak a word about uh, networks. Uh, most of the parsers are not using MIME header checking, so we are able to refer to almost any kind of files to be downloaded as a MIME, uh, uh, sorry, as a DTD uh, document. And if we could uh, think about it, basically an attacker uh, could start to down download uh, four or five, uh, for example, Ubuntu images, uh, Ubuntu ISO images as DTD. And that would uh, have quite an impact on uh, the application or network performance. Okay, but uh, we really need to get uh, to something that could be utilized during a bug bounty session. So I think uh, we should speak about XML fragment injection. Uh, I hope everyone is familiar with the uh, injection-based attacks like SQL, SQL uh, injection and LDAP injection. Uh, so let's familiarize uh, with some XML-based ones. These attacks are one of the most underutilized ones, I think, uh, in an XML environment. But as almost all of the uh, injection attacks are related to concatenation to a certain degree, uh, this will have this condition as well. And uh, it is quite good that a lot of developers are using proper serialization for uh, XML. So these attacks are, are more, more likely in the trial by error uh, segment. So uh, in which case, uh, in, in a case where we can alter the XML itself, it is an easy task to add text to it. Uh, I had success in some uh, application adding the admin node uh, in, for example, a user registration XML message, and I became instantly admin on the uh, system. Uh, it is really unusual, but sometimes it works. Uh, a more likely scenario is when some part of the message is concatenated, and we could simply add our payload in, for example, a post field, post data field in a registration or update form. Uh, in uh, the case displayed here, uh, we need the parser to handle uh, duplicated uh, tags in, in a field. So as we can see, uh, the bio element is duplicated in here. So uh, that does not really work in most of the cases, but uh, there are uh, some edge cases where it uh, is really useful and fun to exploit. Uh, if you take a look at uh, this example, which is a modified version of uh, one exact finding I had in a system, uh, we all know uh, where this is going. So the concatenated message uh, is something that is, well, really good to be exploited in a banking environment. So if we craft or specific message uh, to create an additional transaction in the boot processing, uh, we could basically have a free uh, transfer to our or another uh, bank account. Uh, it is really hard to exploit these ones and uh, even with internal knowledge it is not uh, 
easy to pull off this kind of uh, exploits. Uh, but before we this kind discard this kind of attack, I really would like to point out that a lot of incidents are happening from actors that has really deep knowledge of the given system uh, or have got some sources leaked and stuff. I think uh, that it is enough on injection. Let's uh, explore the following topic, which is server-side request forgery. But why? Uh, the XML processing server is most likely to be in an IP zone where a lot of private stuff is av available. Uh, internal st services, status reports, Git-like repositories or something. So that's quite a good target to look for. Uh, we could discover uh, internal services uh, with the previous examples. We just need to swap uh, the file uh, URI or URL uh, to an internal HTTP or HTTPS based URL. Later on we're gonna speak a little bit about uh, these kind of handlers and specific ones. Um, so it is easy to see that uh, we could uh, get information from uh, different sites. I uh, said Git specifically because uh, you could explore a Git repository uh, using get request. So uh, that's quite great. Okay, but what happens uh, when we are trying to reach something that will not be parsable. In the pet store Swagger IO, uh, the Swagger JSON file contains uh, special characters that are not able to be parsed or they could not be parsed. Uh, so our XML parser uh, will uh, throw an error for us. Uh, later on, we're going to see a demo uh, for that as well. So, uh, have we ever heard about uh, C data? Uh, basically, it's a block which is excluded uh, from interpreting. It is telling the XML parser that uh, the following segment of the document is a character dat data, so do not try to parse it. Uh, it is quite a good candidate uh, for having uh, this kind of hack to be work, but there is a problem with it. To that problem, uh, we've got a solution which is not mentioned so far, which was not mentioned so far, and uh, here is where the clever uh, part comes. Uh, in the DTD, we are able to create uh, so-called parameter entities, and with the help of these, we will be able uh, to basically uh, create the C data block uh, and get the content of the site as well without uh, having the failure, having the parser to fail. So it is not an easy one. Uh, it is a multi-stage exploit. So uh, we've got quite some uh, things to do. So without further ado, I would like to uh, share some kind of uh, demo. In my lab environment, I created a small showcase to demo this whole thing. And the most easy XML attack that is employed all the time is basically uh, utilizing this service, which uh, gives us back a simple message uh, from the server. Uh, the attack that we initially uh, showcased or initially uh, told the XXE attack is as follows. So we could get the file content. We are using this file handler, uh, but we really would like to get to this internal uh, website of the uh, on the other domain, uh, which is the 106. Uh, so we could utilize that service. So imagine that this service is not available from us uh, and this is uh, securely zoned 
computer for computer for example uh, we could get the internal site uh, content when uh, the source of the internal file is uh, a valid uh, and well formatted document but what happens when we uh, try to get uh, the swagger uh, JSON from the pet store example from swagger.io. Uh, the problem here is that we are uh, getting back an error where uh, the uh, document is not able to be parsed because it is uh, containing special characters, for example, here. Uh, but we really would like to have uh, these kind of documents as one of the penetration tests I performed uh, contained a Swagger documentation uh, similar to this one but of course on uh, a live and production service and I really wanted to see what API could I call because there are of course get services which should be available and as we can see we clearly can send uh, or, or receive data from these kind of services. So we create uh, the uh, example uh, mentioned here, which is not really working, and we get back because of the C data block, uh, the XXE, and not the content of this uh, URI or URL that we really would like to see. Uh, so we create an other uh, for example, that could be the attacker uh, service, which have something like that along the lines with that. Uh, we specify what kind of uh, data we really need. Of course, uh, this technique is uh, available to use local files as well, containing special characters. So we create uh, a, a malicious uh, document type definition file and uh, reference it from our attacker side and uh, we reference the all which was defined here we are referencing it and uh, with the special characters there should be no problem at all it takes a while to reach out to the swagger.io but as we can see uh, we are able to pull uh, this document uh, even uh, if it has got uh, some kind of special characters which should prevent uh, XML to fail. Okay, and in the log uh, we could see that uh, the DTD uh, was referenced as well and uh, as I mentioned earlier uh, the DTD is not uh, having uh, the extension of DTD and no mime spiffing is uh, performed so uh, the txt extension is valid in here as well so getting back to our slides uh, I hope that it is understandable now that uh, basically we can get, uh, and by that I mean HTTP get, almost any internal sites and contents. So I think uh, it is quite a useful trick to employ in any environment. Of course, uh, there are uh, preconditions which is necessary, which are necessary uh, to this hack to work. Uh, so. Uh, I think uh, it's still worth a try in most of the cases. Uh, there is one topic uh, which is uh, worth to mention and that are the handlers in XML. I think uh, these are uh, really interesting parts of the XML uh, environment or world. Uh, as of now, I mentioned a lot of times that how uniform XML is and, and why it is a great uh, target to attack as the file HTTP, HTTPS and uh, FTP is uh, mostly implemented. FTP is rarely uh, 
enabled, but uh, the first three is kind of always enabled. Uh, but there are special handlers where uh, we could shine or really exploit uh, a targeted systems uh, system. Uh, most of the penetration testers are familiar with the PHP-based uh, handler. So PHP has got a handler uh, which is uh, also PHP, which is called also PHP, uh, with filters. And this is a really great stuff to get, uh, for example, uh, Base64 encoded uh, PHP files and contents from the server. Uh, I, I would like to leave for everyone, everyone to digest um, the following handler PHP has, uh, which is SSH2 tunneling. I, I have no comments on that, so please do not uh, enable that like ever in a PHP situation. I think we all know uh, where this is going. That could be a lot of problems. Uh, forwarding ports with PHP uh, to external sites uh, because of an XML attack. Uh, but uh, a lot of talks are just uh, PHP bashing. I think uh, that there is some trouble elsewhere as well. Uh, for example, uh, the Java jar uh, handler could be abused and we could basically access uh, contents of a zip file uh, on a system. So, and of course, uh, here still could be working uh, the uh, C data hack that we had before. Uh, binary query files are mostly uh, undoable, but text based are mostly okay in with this uh, C data hack. So I could have a whole talk on, on this topic by itself, uh, I mean the handlers, uh, but I think it is time uh, to close up uh, with something un unusual. Uh, so quite a while ago, a good friend of mine told me that the secret of uh, presentations are not to tell jokes constantly and be funny all the time, uh, but to achieve that, that uh, everyone in the end uh, has a good laugh. So to close up, I took two of the truest or uh, finest XML-based software development word truths or, or dogma. And well, let's agree on these two facts. Well, uh, we had one problem and we choose to solve it with XML. Now we have two problems. So it is definitely true. Uh, try to stay away from XML when possible if no one knows how to use it correctly. It is a great tool, but please, please uh, configure it and disable the features that are not necessary uh, for the given use case. And the second one, uh, as I promised, I have something for the Star Wars fan, Star Wars fan base. Uh, so uh, we had one problem and we choose to solve it using multi-threading. Now two problems we have. And I think uh, Yoda approves the last statement. <laughs> Okay, ho hopefully uh, there was at least a little grim on everyone's face uh, because of the jokes. I really hope that uh, we had some new or so provoking information in the past few minutes. I believe that uh, we really need to show the world that XML-based services could be exploited in many ways. Uh, so in case there is any question or criticism, uh, I'd love to get those via email. Feel free to contact me. And as just a closing fun fact, please never ever use uh, online format tests to beautify your hacking payloads. I was Mark Modley, and I hope that next year we will meet in real life as well. Take care and enjoy the conference.
Well, thank you, Mark, for the uh, awesome presentation. Uh, I think that uh, on the Discord channel, we have not seen uh, any questions yet, but uh, this is the time for the audience to, to ask. So please, uh, if you have any questions, just uh, write it in Discord. Until then, Mark, uh, could you please uh, summarize uh, your presentations in, in uh, some sentences, uh, highlight the most important uh, parts of it? Yeah, of course. I'm happy to be here. And honestly, I was quite thrilled that my talk uh, made it to the uh, final in here. So I am glad that everyone uh, was here. I hope everyone enjoyed it, even the dead jokes as well. So the key takeaway is uh, from the last side that I think we really should abuse and use XML in a way uh, that it is not well utilized right now. And I hope that everyone took away some part of the presentation as well. So hopefully in the next uh, CTF, we will be having some kind of a better understanding and task to deploy or have even uh, from both of the sides of the CTF organizers and the participants as well.